So come along for the journey. <laughs> the boat too. Lately, I've upgraded my wallet to be more organized, more RFID secure, and more minimalist with the Ridge Wallet. Opening my new Ridge Wallet, I love how it holds all my cards so neatly and efficiently and tucks my cash away in the back. Very thoughtful to include this nice tool and extra screws just in case. Reasons why I love this Ridge Wallet. It fits in the front of my pants here. Very minimalist in the front and I have good mobility with my wallet inside. I hate having a big bulky wallet that hinders my leg movement. RFID blocking, I'm always worried someone's gonna scan my credit card and then go on a spending spree. I love having all of my cash and cards in this little tiny guy. If I'm gonna be in Canada, I have the Canadian on the outside. If I'm going to the States, I put the American on the outside. If we are in town paying for something, we just push right here. The cards come out, you can pop and they all fan. And then you pick the one you want slide them back in and it goes right back into the pocket minimalist so minimalist organized very secure with the rfid and when it's in my pants it feels like there's nothing there right now you can save up to 40 percent through december 22nd head to the link ridge.com offgrid to see the wide variety of wallets and key cases they have available so i was happy to find the ridge key case it has that minimalist type of design like the ridge wallet and all I do is I take my finger and I push right here and all those keys that I use for different locks and doors on Appa, the sailboat, are kind of tucked away nice sleek. So this Ridge key case helping me stay more minimalist, less bulk in my pocket, and now I'm more of a happy camper. Get the best offer with the link ridge.com slash offgrid.
fun fox now. Okay. Talk a little bit louder. I think we have to wait. Okay. <laughs> He's gonna wake up. Anyways, I feel winter's coming, but I just like breathing out here and just, uh, I don't know, living in a yurt and being out in nature. But. Yeah. Well, I'll be honest with you, I have cabin fever really bad right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. When we got back here from the tropical property, you were so gung-ho about being here, and I was like, well, you tend to get a little cabin fever after you know, many months, and you were like, no, I'm just going to be into herbs and mushrooms, and I can't wait for the snow in my and my rainwater shower. And, and now it's fall, and everything <laughs> has died. <laughs> Do you remember when we lived in the Spirit Bear, our white van, the white Delica van? Yeah, I mean, that was our first home out here in that uh, Delica van. Yeah, can you imagine, like, not having the property, and if we just did, like, van life, like... A van life couple and just toured around all of Canada and the U.S. and Mexico. That'd be fun. I um, I've always wanted to drive through the U.S., live in a vehicle, and then drive all the way down through Mexico, Central America, and then all the way to the tip of South America, like this movie, The Motorcycle Diaries, about Che Guevara. But I secretly follow couples that do Prius Sprinter van life. <gasps> That would be really small. <laughs> you think you can handle it? You can do like van life? Would you rather just be mobile in a van or like an RV or a Sprinter instead of having the property? I think a good balance of both. Mm. I think I like having the property and the garden and the, you know, the herbs and, and all that. But I think it would be fun to like go off and drive around and see new sites, pulling off the side of the road and sleeping in your vehicle that you're driving in. I think it sounds really cool. And having a police officer at 3 a.m. knock on your door. <laughs> no. <laughs> that happened to us one time mm. at the Grand Canyon. Right? Yeah, we did that. That was spooky. I don't think that I would ever want to do like a sailboat full time and a van full time mm -hmm. if I didn't have the garden and the property to to back it up because like to do only a sailboat but have no physical, you know, plot of land as your own. I just that yeah. seems like we have to garden. We, we're yeah. gardeners and foragers. Yeah, like being able to take your van to your property or take your sailboat to your property and then have the balance of both, that makes a lot of sense to me. And then if like you want a break from your property, you go van life or sailboat life. If you want a break from your sailboat, you go foraging, gardening, living in the land. Well, how do we get this balance? How do we, the van is stuck over on this side. You know, there are ways that we could, um, we can leave Komorebi briefly and we can experience what it would be like to be a nomad Oh, really? Van lifestyle for short term, if you want. Oh, okay. I'm in. You want to try it? Sure. You want to disappear for like a week and be a van life RV nomad person? <laughs> yeah, sure. I can set this up. Let's do it. You, you really want to do that? Yeah. All right, give me, a, give me a few minutes here. I'll set it up for us. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> hey, babe, so I think I found a bunch of different like sprinter vans and RVs and uh, fifth wheels and there's like a wide variety on RV and go. And uh, some of them, like it's a truck you drive, but some of them it's your vehicle and you tow the RV. And uh, we're looking for like a sprinter, right? Or do you want something like a, a Thor magnitude diesel class C, something bigger? Whatever is available. Well, there's lots um, in and around the Seattle area. So we'd have to drive though down the island to get to it. And then we take the RV on the adventure across Washington, Oregon, Utah, and uh, Idaho. Yeah. I mean, this is not our vibe. Do you really want to do this? This is like uh, living an alternative lifestyle. It doesn't ride the wind, but it would be kind of a fun adventure. And um, I don't know, we could pretty much stay anywhere in nature on the way. I like it. Let's do it. All right, I'm gonna choose a start date, end date, and then I think a few of these people that have their RV for rent, um, RV and Go puts like a message system, so I'm gonna message a few of them, okay. Even though a vehicle like this is a little bit out of Nicole's in my comfort zone, I knew approximately where I wanted the journey to begin, and I knew where the destination was. The destination was Thanksgiving with Nicole's family in Salt Lake City, Utah. And since we're in the Canadian temperate rainforest, it made a lot of sense to us to rent an RV from RV and Go that enabled us to cross over to the American border and pick up the RV as quickly as possible. Initially, our goal was to rent a Sprinter van, something smaller, a little more manageable, but we quickly found that many of the Sprinter vans that were available were outside of our destination path. There's a small town in Washington called Snohomish that had a 2023 Ford Thor magnitude for rent. In fact, the RV was brand new and we'd be the first family that took it on a journey. 
Even though this was a far larger vehicle than we had imagined, we messaged the owners and went for it. This episode is going to be a little bit different, but very exciting. Jake and I and Fox deserve a much needed, fun, unique, cool adventure. So we're hitting the road and we're going to go visit family for American Thanksgiving. So come along for the journey. Let's see what, uh, what cool things we see along the way. Let's go. Yeah, like like Hi. a tank, I want to say, the generator will not turn on. Because, and, and because strand, yeah. ex yes, exactly, yeah, sure. exactly. There's like some, and I'm not sure exactly what the level is, but there's some safety feature where uh, it won't do that. <laughs> but, but, I mean. What do you think of our new home for the week? This is fancy. <laughs> fancy, huh? Way fancier than what we're used to. We're so blue. We're calling this the disco room, even though it's just a loft with a blue light. It's very disco-esque. Disco-esque. Ha, huh, Foxitron. Ah, oh, the booty, the, ah. Oh. Ouch, can't see. I can't see, I can't see. Hi. Hi. Hello. 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 You want to see him really happy? Watch this. Do, 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 do. Are you looking at Bree? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Bree. Hi. This is Bree. Hi, Bree. Yeah. It's like Puma and Kai's girl companion. Yeah. Are you going to show us the way out, Bree? All right, we ready? Ready? Let's hit the road. Are you gonna drive us? <laughs> hey, look. Behind you, there's two little blue oh. foxes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're in the Columbia River Gorge. It's my favorite part of Oregon, and I can't see any of it. It's dark. It's dark. We just passed the most epic, beautiful falls, which you can't see them. Multnomah. That's what you see. Darkness. Nighttime shamans. Height and deep sensation. Darkness stirs and wakes imagination.
eating ravioli and tortellini with mushroom and spinach. Mmm, and some salmon. Do you want to try some? Just show you. Do you want to eat the fish? Yeah. 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 Ready? Hey, well, when me, you go and tea, me, Ever since I was about 17 years old, I always thought it was the coolest thing in the world to be able to get in your car and drive pretty much anywhere at any time. The vast majority of everything I learned in my life, whether it was martial arts, construction, gardening, was done via road trips in my teens and my 20s. And now it's so nice to have the family together traveling as a unit. Nicole and I are so very thankful to a company like RV and Go that develops a website enabling you to get on the open road, rent an RV, and have an incredible experience as a family. Even though we're not in the market for buying one of these giant RVs, this Class C Thor Magnitude was a safe way for us to avoid the crowds and have a more intimate family experience as we traveled across four states and two countries to visit with Nicole's family for Thanksgiving. We were surprised to see how many family members made the trip for Thanksgiving and the house was quite full. This made us entirely thankful to have this giant RV, not only for sleeping in at night, but for having the extra space for showers, for getting ready, and also for having that quiet nap time and feeding time for Fox. Yay! <laughs> Fox. Get it? Fox. 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 <laughs> now that Thanksgiving was over, 
we had the return journey to look forward to. And this actually excited us more because we were able to enjoy nature and stop at some national parks and state parks along the way and slow down a bit to enjoy the nature that surrounded us. I did all the driving for the family on the trip, and even though it's tiring to drive that much, it truly was beautiful to see the landscapes change, the light going into dark, and to be able to stop and pull over anywhere, experiencing new places we've never been before. What is this? A baby? Or yeah. a piggy? Or a bear? <laughs> he looks pretty comfy though. Did you dress him like this? Well, yeah, there's snow on the ground. He <laughs> put his little snow boots on. <laughs> Look at those snow boots. <laughs> are we ready? I think the dogs are ready. <laughs> Dig us your shirt. Shirt. Here you go. Nice to know for you. <laughs> go, guys, go. How are you doing? Good. We're calling this the disco loft. We're just hanging out here. <laughs> You're all a weird color, bro. <laughs> <laughs>
guys ready? You feel the power? Nice over. Is that funny? There <laughs> you go. Okay. Hey, Kanka.
Whoa. <laughs> I think there's something just so earthy about um, getting here to Appa, the sailboat, and uh, not having anything complex with pumps and electronics and diesel fuel furnaces and all this, you know, complex stuff. I just like the power of a nice wood stove, especially for living in this area. So we got you know, unlimited wood at Komorevi. I hate uh, leaving Nicole and Fox, but um, I've been sneaking down here just to uh, light a fire for an hour or so, warm it up, dry it out in the hull, and uh, hopefully the boat will be healthier. We'll be doing that um, up until the spring when we finally set off and do some more long-term adventures, you know, a week, two weeks, a month longer. And it's really incredible uh, how these wood stoves work. You know, it's like uh, two degrees in here. Oh, you see my breath, two or three. And within uh, 10 minutes, I'm gonna have it to 15. And then within 30 minutes, I'll have it to 20 or 25 in here. And then if Fox and Nicole come hang out in the boat, I usually get it going for an hour or two, get it nice and warm for them, and then uh, they come once it's warmed up. That way uh, the baby is nice and uh, healthy and comfortable. I think a lot of you in the comments saw the video where we talked about Appa and uh, you thought we were taking off that day and leaving our off-grid property behind. And um, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but Bruce Lee didn't learn the martial arts in one day. Do you know what I'm saying? Tiger Woods didn't learn to golf like that in one day. You know, there's a lot of process uh, and time and effort that goes into having the skills in something where you feel confident in yourself. And uh, most of the time, before video, before YouTube, before smartphones, before internet, you know, nobody saw the time and effort it, it took to put it into a skill. Now everybody wants to see a YouTube show or a YouTube channel on the journey, you know, and people no longer watch somebody who's skillful at something. 
uh, to learn and be inspired. They want to watch somebody who doesn't know anything about something and who actually sucks at something. And they want to watch somebody who's a beginner because maybe they'll make it. And everybody wants to see Rocky make it. They want to see Rocky when he stinks. And they want to see Rocky, you know, beat Apollo and become the champion. Nobody wants to see Apollo Creed when he's already the champion. You know what I'm saying? We want to see these, you know, romantic hopefuls that might make it in the future. And we don't follow somebody who's fit anymore. We follow somebody who used to be heavy, you know, who used to be carrying around a lot of weight. And then they got in shape or they're constantly going through the struggle. So they're just like me. So I want to follow them because they're just like me. Um, instead of following somebody who's been healthy and in shape their whole life. I think that's more of a modern day phenomena with the internet where we want to watch somebody who's just like me. We want to watch somebody go through the journey instead of finding a master who's the best at something and do what they do. So I think of sailing in that way where, you know, Nicole and I are taking our time over the winter to get this boat ready. So I've destroyed this area, but I've got a wood stove in here now for cooking and uh, keeping things dry and warming things up. Just like an electric car is useless unless the electricity comes from s clean sources like solar or wind, and unless there are charging networks everywhere, I need a charging network. And so I've turned this berth, I don't know if you would call it a berth or just the eating area. This eating area also converts into a bed. So we've kept it as a bed so that when a fox comes in here, he can play. And we just got this artwork. <laughs> from a local artisan that we're hanging up on the wall so we remember the whales while we're sailing. I just took it down because it's gonna fall off when the waves hit. But I took this part that used to be for life jackets and um, plumbing supplies, and I've hollowed the whole thing out and cut a doorway here. And I'll be putting in a hinge and a, a door here to have all the wood stored inside here. So I think that between this area and this area down below, I can store about, you know, 10 days to two weeks worth of wood in the boat. And I think that'll be good because oh, the fan just started spinning. If you remember back in the day when my friend Matt was staying with us for a time, we installed one back in the Tuk Tuk boat. And um, they've been really great. They are solid, uh, they'll last forever, and they really do heat up a space. When I first put the stove in here, as a proof of concept for a couple weeks on a wooden stump and I lit a bunch of fires. The wall was getting really hot and uh, I was afraid that maybe the boat would have some problems getting overheated. Um, and then you talk to a lot of old timers here and everybody, when they see your sailboat, they all think that they're an expert sailor and they want to give you uh, advice, you know, and they all give you, you know, advice, advice that you might not want to take. Um, I think it's important to stay humble and listen to everybody's advice, but then have a, a really incredible filter that comes from the school of hard knocks and enables you to you know filter out the stuff that's not useful so i actually turned to youtube and i found another couple i think their boat is something ava or something like that and uh i just found their video where they had the cubic mini wood stove as well they were the only couple that i could see that had the cubic mini on the boat on the sailboat and i love that so um I thought, you know, I'm not the only crazy person out there. And then I use Cubic Mini Wood Stove's mounting, wall mounting uh, system here. And when I put this on the wall, it really has made it so that nothing's hot that shouldn't be. Like none of this is hot right now to the touch. The stove is hot, it'll burn my skin off, you know. Um, I love these little tools right here that I can use for the fire. And, uh, and now I have this thing hung at the perfect height so that these cushions that we have don't get burned. So we lift these up and there's lots of storage down below in these benches. And the Cubic Mini here can just uh, kick away and everything's pretty healthy. So kudos to them for a great product. I think I even saw they have different colors now, which I'm kind of jealous about. It would have been cool to have like a green one. I'll give you guys a full tour of the boat later. I'm not ready to give you guys a tour yet, but if you guys pull these cushions away, everything is storage. So back behind here is storage. Um, underneath these cushions is more storage. Actually, underneath here is all my spear fishing gear in that bag. So that next time I go out with uh, Nicole or Dr. Kevin, I'll just come in here to Appa and grab the gear.
I think that'll be a good amount of wood, you know, two weeks of wood, 10 days of wood, because let's say you're on a month long trip and it's early spring, fall or winter in the Pacific Northwest, Alaska, Haida Gwaii, Vancouver Island. I think that we will find wood along the way as well. So as we do our trip, if we get, you know, um, some good pieces of cedar that we find, we can replenish our stores, you know. But this is kind of exciting to me, so we're gonna make this area better. We got um, this area that I pulverized down to the fiberglass, and I'm gonna just put some shelves in here and keep these short shelves here and put things on it that need to stay warm and dry. And then underneath here, uh, put a piece of wood, and underneath this is all gonna be wood storage down below. Cubic mini wood stove. This is the Grizzly and the Ecofan, making it comfortable and healthy in APA. As far as YouTube goes, I always felt like the audience of a YouTube video is very fortunate and very lucky to be able to get these insights into these people's lives. And um, in the early days of YouTube, I can remember watching a fitness guy. I won't say his name and um, I didn't think he was very good and I thought that he was actually kind of manipulating and groping the people he was doing the fitness video with and so I left a comment when YouTube first started like 06, 07. I made a comment about hey you know um, keep your hands to yourself and just stay professional and the guy commented back within minutes and kind of let me have it and said why don't you mind your own business <laughs> and I can remember being a younger guy and going wow these are not just television stations putting out these videos. These are real people with real emotions and real egos putting these videos out. And I'm actually lucky as the audience to glimpse this insight into this sailor, off-grid person, bushcraft person, um, fitness person, you know, chess master, whatever you're watching. Um, I really feel like it's a gift uh, not to be an addiction to have these videos that people make and it's your job as the audience to find the masters. I don't really like following the journey. I've gotten to the point where I like finding the masters. I think everything that I know how to do in life, everything that I know how to do really well, I learned from somebody in person in real life. I think that the knowledge we're getting from videos and especially the things we're seeing and learning from the shortened stories and shorts and TikToks is completely fleeting and actually what it does is it it discourages us from going off and living a good life and having those experiences and learning those skills it discourages us because it kind of like wets our whistle and teases us and then we move, we move on to something else so our mind gets used to like oh, i'll just skip on to something else where back in the day you know if you wanted to learn let's say for instance a sport or a trade skill like welding or the martial arts you had to go find a master in that skill. And then you had to find out a way to somehow break the ice and meet that master. And if you can meet that master, then you had to figure out a way to maybe see them in action. And then if you saw them in action, maybe, maybe you can figure out a way to become their apprentice. And if you became their apprentice, you wouldn't want to mess that up. You want to be their apprentice for years and years and years and years until time has you know been forgotten about and you wake up one day and realize oh you're in your 30s you're in your 40s you're in your 50s and now you're the master you know 20 years have has passed i think we need to get back to that we need to realize that you know if you guys uh see us announce that we're going to do some sailing go on some adventures on appa you know there's a reason why we've done things in the order we've done things in we showed up to Komorebi in a van and we owned that van outright. It was very inexpensive. We did the work ourselves on it. And then we lived in that as we built out Komorebi and built that yurt. And we were lucky to have uh, you know, a neighbor acres and acres away say, hey, I have a little, a little uh, shed that is not being used if you guys want to use it to, uh, to get a good night's sleep, take some showers. And um, we were so you know, grateful for their hospitality. And then it encouraged us to get the yurt up very quickly. And once the yurt was up, we were so happy to have that yurt. And above all of that, I was just happy to have the property. You know, I had been dreaming for so many years about what it would be like to own, you know, acres of property, which I thought wasn't in the cards for me. I just thought there's no way I'll ever have enough money or the opportunity or the will 
or the guts to go do something like that. And uh, I think it was really Nicole. You know, we got together and she had the idea of woofing because her brother had done woofing um, worldwide opportunities on organic farms. And we went and woofed in France and Portugal and Spain. And I left America for that year. And it really showed me that, you know, you can go do something adventurous and something exciting. Well, let's do the property. So having the property, one that I could afford, one that was not very expensive, but in a very beautiful area. And the reason why it was not very expensive because it's very hard to get to and it's very hard to survive in, that to me was like winning the lottery. The van led to the yurt and the yurt has led to a family Another family has led to a sailboat, and I think um, that's going to be our ticket to traveling around and going on adventures and seeing this uh, beautiful planet, especially other ecosystems. And in the bug out location in the tropical property, Moe Uhane, you guys saw uh, when we gave birth to Fox, I would love to be able to use the wind to travel between the two properties. So that's the ultimate goal is to travel from the temperate rainforest to the tropical rainforest, riding the wind. and. Uh, I just feel like that's a good life, you know, taking the wood that we um, have in abundance and we sustainably cut at Komorebi and using that to heat our sailboat and then using the wind to travel and growing our own food and fishing for our own food and foraging for our own food. That's why I brought the spear gun in here today because uh, I'm storing all my spear fishing gear here on Appa. I just think it's a good life. And then um, if you're able to sail far enough to a tropical climate, you no longer need the wood stove, you know. What you need then is you need to have some fans for air circulation. <laughs> I think human life is an interesting thing. I think that we're supposed to be on this planet getting experiences. And so I think that modern society, the one that we live in, is trying to convince you to go get a paycheck. And I just really, I'm really afraid of that. I feel that going to an office for somebody else that somebody else created and just working for a paycheck is um, it's robbing you of a more earthly human experience. So I always try to get back to having no debt, growing my own food, forging for my own food, cooking with wood, building with cob, milling my own wood, traveling around the wind, uh, being as close to the natural elements of ocean and waterfall and forest and mountain and river as we can. And, if I do those things, I feel that I'm never steered wrong, that I can be on my deathbed when I'm 125 years old and I can take my last breath knowing, wow, I, I really just really enjoyed that nature. And I enjoyed those stars. And I really just enjoyed all those earthly elements that that planet threw at me and all of the emotional puzzles that human life threw at me. And I'll be really happy with my experience if, um, I keep close to nature. So that's what this boat's about. And I can't wait to uh, clean this up and have this uh, looking more classy. So one thing we have coming in is solar panels and wind turbines. I can't wait to show you. And I just can't wait to show you guys the sails going up and us riding the wind for the first time here on the YouTube channel. So stay close. Tune in tomorrow for part two of this episode as immediately upon returning to Como Repi, winter gave us the earliest snowfall and ice storm we have ever experienced. I return to ice bathing to battle winter blues and we find a pair of cougar tracks stalking deer on our property. The pads themselves are, like my hands are pretty huge. Put Nicole's hand down at the time. This episode is going to come at you quick, so subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>